Hi, welcome back to the digital job site for this second uh, part in a series for showing how to use SketchUp to um, do the calculations for uh, a stairway. In the first session, we created a layout plane uh, with some elements here to um, to represent uh, on-site conditions. We're going to add um, some more to these elements to um, help clarify what the calculations are for uh, encountering the different things um, that are typical of a stairway installation. So this line here represents the, the end of a floor truss. I hope this stuff becomes clear uh, in a bit as you watch the video. I'm going to throw some more guidelines in here um, so we can draw more of the, the components. I'm going to assume on top of this this uh, subfloor that'd be existing on the job site that eventually it's going to get a hardwood floor, which uh, would pretty typically be three quarters of an inch thick. Um, this line will make more sense in the future. I like to use uh, a piece of three quarter inch plywood as a hanger for um, for the stair stringers. That's what that line is going to represent. And then typically we would have a, a three quarter inch riser board on a stairway, and then a one inch nosing on our stairs and you'll see how these guidelines benefit in um, drawing our um, our stair components and I'm going to assume that we're going to use an inch and a quarter uh, thick nosing and a thick uh, one inch and a quarter thick tread on these stairs and that's you know they range anywhere from three quarters to inch and a half or two inches who knows what you'll encounter um, so I'm going to draw um, just some more guidelines here, and you'll see how these guidelines benefit um, the geometry. That last guideline was 5 eighths of an inch, which is half the thickness of our stair tread, and then this upper nosing. I just use that so I can put a bull nose edge on these, the stair, and then these other guidelines uh, are just going to represent uh, different components. You can see here I'm just tracing guidelines going to points and now I've created a profile for a stair nosing. I can get rid of some of this geometry here and then add a line here and drawing in the red direction. I can get a straight line without a guideline. All right, so this will represent um, the things that are going to be needed to draw our stairs. I'm just going to get out the material dialog box here and select wood so that um, some of these features will um, be a little easier to remember what they represent further on in the drawing process. So I colored the floor truss with that. There's a plywood. I'll use that for this plywood subfloor. And then we're just going to go to dark wood floor for the hardwood flooring and the nosing. That kind of differentiates the different things we've drawn here for our stair and you those aren't essential but um, it just helps to um, keep track of some of the things that we're drawing here uh, all right we've shown uh, that we're planning on putting let's in this case three quarter inch hardwood floor on the floor upstairs and then I'm just going to assume that we're putting some tile on the floor downstairs so we'll, we'll say that that's going to end up getting a half inch tile on the basement floor when this is all done. All right, with all those uh, things in place, um, we will be able to calculate our finished, our, our, uh, the total rise that we're going to end up with. So I've clicked to the top of the tile on top of the basement floor, and I go up to the top of the hardwood floor upstairs on the, on the main level of this house. And um, that'll give us our total um, finished uh, our finished total rise is all I'm trying to say. And uh, with all those components in place, we can see that we're going to end up in this situation with 10 foot four. Um, as the total rise from the top of the tile to the top of the finished floor upstairs. And by entering all these things in at this stage in this way, um, 
the uh, stair stringer will have all the dimensions that it'll take to end up with um, a correct riser height for each step. So the last thing I'll do on this video is make a group of all this geometry so as we proceed um, we won't be corrupting our layout dimensions. So with that I'll stop this video.